get into the middle of summer and the water's getting hot, there's a lot of different lures that'll catch bass. Whether they're dark water or clear water, here's some lures to put some bass in your boat. I mean, I think everybody knows early in the morning a top water bait is a great, great chance. It's a great bait to catch big bass and sometimes catch the biggest bass in the day on top water. I prefer the Rio Rico, but my setup here, a lot of people use fluorocarbon, see a monofilament line, I have transitioned to braid. I use 20 pound braided line, and my retreat with it is usually fairly moderate to slow, plop, 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 instead of plop, 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 but I will mix it up depending on what the fish do. You see fish blowing up on the surface, that's a real good time to throw it, but this thing will work, I don't care if it's clear water or dark water. And if you ever get a day that's just real calm all day long, I don't care if it's two, three, four in the afternoon, if it's gin, if it's glassy calm out, this is another bait that will bring in fish for long distance, especially smallmouth bass. Feeling my 9k jigs gonna come in handy today, and uh, you know, I've tried slop, I've tried flipping flop, I've tried uh, uh, chatter baits, I've tried tough water. <sighs> come on, you that good. Finally, I just had enough. It's like, I'm gonna come fish, fish some back to my jig, and boom. When you're fishing natural lakes that are developed along shoreline, I'm telling you, this is gonna be hard to beat the docks day in, day out for the biggest fish in the lake. I believe this time of year, fish are either extremely deep or extremely shallow. And uh, you can throw senkles and trick worms up against those docks to be very effective. Or you can throw a jig. This is my favorite jig to throw under a dock. Half ounce flipping jig by 9K leaf lures. But I use 40 pound braid. And I don't know, if it seems like a much difference between 40 and 50 pound braid, but I'm telling you, if you drop from 50 pound down to 40 pound, you'll be amazed at how much further you can cast that underneath the dock. Same would be true if you drop down a 30 pound test or 20 pound test. I just don't like the strength for 30 or 20 pound test when you're throwing it around the docks and wood and steel and who knows what other debris is down there. Man, he got that deep in his throat. Nice fish. A little skinny. A little short skinny. Man, what a mouth. Well, yeah, the dog fight's gonna kick in now. That was pretty cool. So watching my crankbait on the live scope. I'm seeing bait fish in the area and I threw and I actually saw like three fish come up yeah, from the I, bottom I, I, to chase it. And and then then they, they kind of stopped and I paused my bait. Actually it stopped my bait. It's like traditional stop and go and then bam he hit it. You can see this fish is eating a lot. Look at it. It's pooping. And this is gross I know but let's see. Crawdad pieces. That's from a crawdad. So that makes sense why he would come straight off the bottom. Out on the lake today, the crankbait was really the best producer. I was throwing a mag, uh, 44 Magnum by Sea Flash Lures. My man Greg Mang is going to be proud of that one. But uh, this thing's going to crank about 8 to 10 feet deep, depending on the line that you use. I've got, I believe, there's 15 pound fluorocarbon here. And that's, that certainly is a little too strong line. If I break this down or drop this down to 10 pound line, I'd probably get another two or three feet of depth out of it. Airman. Oh, 
Holy cow. Yeah, lift that big boy up. Small mouth. No, it's a largey. There's another crankbait fish. Open up some They're eating a crankbait. I was watching them on the live scope today, seeing them come up and attacking it. Uh, some coming from 10, 15 feet away. Others would follow it and hit it up at next to the boat. But a crankbait, you never want to lose sight of crankbait during the summer. This lake that we're on today has got a gazillion. Yes, gazillion, that's a new number. Bluegill out here, which is why I chose the bluegill color scheme. But if you're on a shad dominant lake, I definitely would throw shad colored baits instead. Like, make it look like we were the ones who got it, not you. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we got a decent one now. Decent? Oh, that's big jumba! Yeah, that's a good bet to keep a small mouth. Ooh wee! That's a small mouth? No, it's a large mouth again. Look at that, look at that. This pooping out crawdad pieces gives me an idea of uh, what they've been eating, but the weird thing is, these fish on a crankbait, yeah. I'm watching them on my live scope, and they're at, reacting very aggressively to it. We caught three fish in real short order, uh, but the AB cast where I'm not catching them, I'm seeing them. I'm seeing them react to it, follow it up. Great summer bait it is a crankbait. Oh, did you do it? Oh man, something just hit it at the boat. It just hit it right at the boat. See? Not bad. <laughs> right at the boat. That Using that live scope, see those fish. And there's a lot of bluegill eaters out here, which is why I've got a bluegill colored crankbait by Sea Flash. Man, Greg Mangus is going to be happy today. Boom. You know, my son whooped my butt not too long ago. Uh, just last week, video of that will pop up right now, but he kicked my butt with a tube. You're on uh, clear water, and in all honesty, you don't need gin clear water for a tube to be effective. It can be, uh, I want to call it tannic color water, where it's clear, but it's tannic colored, and the tube. Extreme Bass Tackle Tubes, I've been using them for years, are my favorite. I like a quarter ounce to five sixteenth ounce because I know some people like lighter because they want that nice swirl as it falls down to the bottom. But frankly, I use the tube to keep it on the bottom to mimic bait fish or perch. I'm sorry, not bait fish, I meant perch or crawdads. Oh yeah, Preston. What you got there? Swing it in, swing it in. What's that bait fish? Or what's that? Yeah, you see it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That there. Small mouth? No, that was a large mouth. But that, oh my goodness. Come here, come here. That there is a two bait done by Preston. Way to go out here in about 17 foot of water on a break line. About where he caught that drop shot fish. But now Preston's got to keep running a tube. Drop shot rig was a hot ticket for us this morning, too. Who killed bait? Yeah. That got something? Yeah, I got something. Big? Feels all right. Got a drop shot rig. Take what you got here? A large mouth or small mouth? I'm betting large. So small. See it? Yeah. Should I get the net? Uh, there we go. Small mouth. Drop shot bait. Now it's a large mouth. Mm -hmm. Ate that. Robo worm. And uh, I don't have mine tied on anymore because a pike just took it. But I will tell you, I use 10 pound fluorocarbon line with an 8 pound liter. I all my tackle is below in the description, including my hook, rod, and reel. Got him? Yeah. Had a big one. Show on the camera. Big one. Oh, yeah. Oh, there was another one down with it. But generally speaking, what we are doing this morning as well, I was able to see fish on a live scope, pitch out to them, and shake it from Actually, actually, I say shake it. Most of my fish came when I was dead sticking that bait. And sometimes they like it like that bait to be shooken a little bit other times they want it dead sticking so just because they don't bite it at first try a different tactic rather than shaking or dead sticking it come on jordo yeah swing them aboard buddy yeah show more drop shot fish yeah this one of your rarest items this i guess like i just finally dad caught one hey, Big? Uh, yeah. Look at that. I keep her bass. Uh, well, you gotta work through your bait sometimes. I was there's a school of fish right out there and watching my live scope up. And 
man, I tried crankbaits, and I tried crankbait over and over and over, and finally just dropped a drop shot in front of them, just kind of let it sit there and dangle in front of them, and finally one of them was a sucker. Thank you for tuning in. Until next time, we'll see you on the water.